Hello and welcome my Taurus Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Welcome to your eight card draw. What do I need, Read for this full moon in Libra, waning to new in Aries, March into April 2021. And that's the second time I've had to see that today. And it's going to get better each time. Uh, I am your reader, Marcangelo Lyons, Mal for short, professional witch, professional intuitive president of Drawing the Circle Productions fellow earth sign Virgo that I am, the Archangel of Lions, Mark Angelo Lions, but you can call me Mal. Hey, my balls, my Taurians, how are you? Uh, happy to be doing these readings, getting us ready for a waning moon tide. Uh, we are doing, as I said, an eight card draw, one card from eight different uh, card systems. This time we have got two tarot decks, two healing systems and four oracles, one of which is new and not technically an oracle, but we're going to go there anyway. Uh, but before we get down to business, let's get to a little bit of business. My book, Words of Grace, is selling. It is on Kindle. It's really wonderful. I've, if you, if you uh, subscribe to the channel, I've been recording some of the prayers from the book and putting it with uh, my own artwork and music and stuff like that. And it's just been a real creative adventure. And that's why I haven't been seeing so many readings for me on the channel since the book launched on Kindle, um, because I've been a busy witch. I'm just a busy, busy witch, and you know, if you want something done, give it to a busy witch. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, I've been doing uh, uh, paid and free events on my Drawing the Circle Productions YouTube channel, uh, sorry, Facebook page, oh, so many platforms. I've been brought in Aunt, uh, Nancy Antonucci, the tarot reader and tarot teacher and author and all that stuff. My friend Lillian Carter, we went to college together, Boston choreographer, premiering her work here. So, drawing the circle, uh, the circle is growing. So, uh, happy to have you aboard uh, and uh, very happy to be doing these reads because waning moons can be tricky, right? We're looking at letting go, releasing, forgiving, alchemizing from lead to gold. We'll go into that as we go. Getting you the clues, tips, and hints from the pantheons of the divine to which I am intimately contracted <laughs> every day of my life uh, to uh, work with and then work through me. So uh, let's get up in this gig. We are looking at the full moon in, uh, in Libra on Sunday the 28th to 48 p.m. I'm in New York, so that's Eastern Time waning to the new moon in Aries on Sunday, March 11th, 10.31 p.m., right? So you're getting that time to gradually, over two weeks, let something go, whittle it down, push it away instead of attract it to you, that kind of stuff. Uh, and very important for shadow work, and that's why I am using <laughs> the Caroline Mace Architect deck to start with, and all the decks that I read are always listed in the description box, including the new one, which we are introducing, and I will review this new deck once I'm done with this series, I have a feeling because I want to really see how they play out. And if I really get a solid feeling about what I want to say, I will do it earlier. All right, that's about it, shall we? All I can ask for anyone watching this, uh, uh, any of my videos or any of my readings is standard YouTube tarot reading supply, right? Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. It's a general read. Check your other signs because you might get more information about the same situation we're about to look at or something else you need, right? According to the divine that you need to be aware of for a waxing, uh, sorry, a waning moon tide. I'll, I'll get used to that in this series. Is that about it? Yeah, if not, it'll pop up again. Hold on one second, please. Hey, sorry about that. Interesting. My youngest uh, cat, my youngest son, uh, Melchior the Taurus, needed me for a minute. So I just had to pause the camera for a second. But I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. So uh, let's do this. As I said, uh, we're going to start with Caroline Mace Archetype deck uh, to look at what is the dominant archetype in play for the Taurus Collective. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. This full moon in Libra waning to new. Uh, this uh, archetype, it's a long story, we'll just do it. Please take a deep breath. Yeah, I'm done explaining for right now. <laughs> and here we go. My collective pantheons of angels, archangels, goddesses, gods, ascended masters, ancestors, and the higher selves of all involved, fifth dimension and above. Eighth chakra and above, please. One card in clarity for the Taurus Collective. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I'm watching this video, receiving this reading. What is the dominant archetype at play for them? Within themselves, within another person, within a situation, all of that, some of that, that they need to alchemize from lead to gold, from shadow to light, from toxic to healing, this full moon in Libra. 
waning to new in Aries, March, April, 2021. Oh, okay. Now, uh, I just did the Aries reading, I don't know, maybe about an hour ago. Took a little break in between, right? And it got a survival family archetype. You got a survival family archetype, but not the same one as Aries. Everybody has uh, the four survival family archetypes. The child, uh, which is everything from the brat to the divine child, right? That whole spectrum of shadow uh, to light led to gold. Uh, the victim, victor. In other words, you experience being victimized until you overcome as victor, like victory. Uh, the saboteur slash empower. Long story, and uh, the prostitute archetype. Well, they got the prostitute archetype, the Aries. You have got the saboteur, and I know it doesn't sound pretty, but I gotta tell you something, everybody has it. And uh, the light side of it I call the empowerer, because it's all about life-changing decisions of empowerment that we go through every day to learn how to survive. Uh, and we are heavily influenced by the conditioning of not just our families, but the societies, the time we grew up in, right? Uh, so the shadow attribute, the lead, that has three more atoms than gold, hence the waning moon, right? Burning off, transforming lead to gold. Uh, the shadow induces self-destructive behavior or the desire to undermine others. Now, the words that they're highlighting here is induces right? Induces self-destructive behavior. So what is that thing inside of you that's really like inducing you to do something that you know in your soul isn't going to be helpful for you? Uh, and the desire, that's the other key word, the desire to undermine others. Now we're all going to have desires to undermine others. Carolyn Mace, and this is her deck, Carolyn Mace archetype deck. <coughs> she says, None of us really want to see anybody else out uh, beat us in the race, right? But that's not the truth of who we are. That is the conditioning. That's what we've picked up. So what you're shooting for here, and remember, this could be somebody else maybe kind of pulling a little saboteurial game going on there. Uh, but this is what you're shooting for in the light. Either way, highlights your fear of self-empowerment and the changes it would bring to your life. Like if you actually speak up and speak the truth, it, will ch it can change everything right? Life-changing decision. And it's okay to feel the fear of that. In fact, you can't alchemize it without acknowledging that you're afraid that if I do this, if I speak up, if I make this, because it might look like a choice, but it can feel like a life-changing decision. And there is a difference between a choice and a decision. Oh, I think I'll have another cup of coffee. That's a choice. Oh, I think I'll sell the house and, you know, move to a, to a warmer climate and raise uh, coffee beans. You know, it's a life-changing decision but it can be even speaking the truth to somebody, so instead you don't, right? There's so many ways that could play itself out, and that's why, A, it's a general read, and B, we have seven more cards to clarify this. So let's do uh, just that. That's the collective pantheons. All of them say the saboteur archetype you're dealing with. You need to address in some way, shape, or form. Let's ask the angels. Healing with the angels oracle, Doreen Virtue. Please take a nice deep breath. All right, my angels of Earth and the sign of Taurus, the Aerialites, the Uriolites, the Aureolites, please, one card in clarity for the Taurus Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I'm watching this video receiving this uh, read. Who is the angel they need to focus on, work with, what have you, in tandem, uh, alchemizing this saboteur archetype from lead to gold, this full moon in Libra waning to new in Aries. Freedom. Freedom. What would the healing angel of freedom do? That's what I've learned with this deck uh, over the decades. Is It's not the name of the angel, that's the task, that's the job, that's the specialty. So what would the healing angel of freedom have to do with the saboteur archetype? Maybe you are being held back. Maybe you're uh, uh, holding back yourself. Now, of course, we all have certain restrictions just living through this past year and continuing on into this year. Certainly that six foot thing, you know what I'm talking about, right? All sorts of restrictions going on here, but to make empowered decisions within the parameters that we have to in for our own well-being and for the well-being of all operate within, at least for now, right? That we can find freedom in that. Saying, no, I am making, catch this, the most loving, wise powerful decision because throat chakra is what spit swallow or chew right spit it out swallow it or no i gotta chew on that i'm gonna do it i'm gonna wait or i'm not doing it at all right so many ways that that can play itself out all right so let's see if anybody else is involved with this eventually but before we go into the tarot right we're gonna do 
uh, uh, the crystal oracle, particularly for earth signs, I have to say, for being a Virgo, four planets, second house in Virgo, um, I mean, they just work, they work with me, I work with them. This deck is dedicated to uh, the Archangel Ariel, who is my personal Archangel, because uh, she is the Archangel of Lions, and my name is Archangel of Lions, so you just gotta go with it. Uh, but uh, one of the three Archangels of the North and the Powers of Earth, hence the Crystal Oracle. Please take a nice deep breath. <sighs> my beloved Ariel, please. One card in clarity. For this Taurus Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign, watching this video, receiving this reading, please. What is the Crystal Oracle? Either what's written in the book, the stone itself that they need to work with. Maybe they already have it. Maybe they don't. Maybe they need to get it. Maybe they don't. But what is the, the some of that, all of that, that you would have them know that they need with the saboteur archetype and the arc and the healing angel of freedom, this uh, full moon in Libra, waning to new in Aries. Ooh, wrote a crow site. This is definitely a relationship stone. Uh, I use it for past life stuff, but past life stuff is almost always to me about or a soul contract that I need to go. What the hell is this? Give me context, right? Oh, practically flipped right to it. Excuse me, rhodochrosite, R-H-O-D-O-C-H-R-O-S-I-T-E, relationships, compassion, blessings, love, and joy are your keywords. It is through our relationships with others that we learn more about our own character. From a higher perspective, everyone we encounter is a reflection of ourselves, and the universe has placed around us the things that will help us expand our love and tolerance. I'm like this on that, and here's why. Yes, the world is our mirror. We project a lot of stuff out onto it, no question. It's just psychologic. That's like psychologology 101. But if you um, check out Greg Braden, you want to go back further than this, you can actually go into the Dead Sea Scroll information and look up the seven Essene mirrors, E-S-S-E-N-E. -E. I came to it through Hay House author Greg Braden. You can find a workshop on YouTube for free, Greg Braden, seven Essene mirrors or something like that. Uh, and yes, the mirror of now is the one that most people learn about first, right? Because it's like you're having a great day and every door opens and songs and fucking rainbows, you know what I mean? And uh, conversely, that you're having a crap day and it's red light, red light everywhere you go, right? Stop sign, stop sign, and horrible. But there is the second mirror, just as an example, um, where it's not the mirror of now, it's the mirror of judgment, right? The thing that you don't do, but that you judge. Like for me, and I always say it, it's like, I do my best to find the most compassionate way to speak truth and be honest, because I've been lied to so much in my life from jump that it's it's the easiest way to torture an, an empath, because we know something wrong is going, no, everything's fine, and passive aggressive can't. I won't, I'll cut it out of my life like that nowadays. Uh, unless there's a deeper conversation, right? So be be aware of that, right? There are different things here, but they are saying that you are being taught something through your relationships, which makes this a soul contract, whether it's twin flame or soulmate, let's just keep going. We shall see. We meet people uh, we like and people we dislike, granted. Uh, when we see what we consider to be positive traits in others, we align with these characteristics because we believe them to be good. So there's an element of air there, right? Thought and belief. Yet, when we see what we consider to be negative aspects in others' characters, we refuse to see those same traits in ourselves because, because we judge them as bad. And actually, what I just said is that when you get, yeah, but that's not something I do, but that is something that I judge. And Greg Brayton says that sometimes it's just the acknowledgement of, oh, that's the mirror of judgment. Bam, the mirror's gone. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, right? Or maybe it comes in, in the next stage, the next level, the next form. Uh, yet the truth is that we have each trait within us, either currently or in the past, otherwise we would not be able to recognize those traits in another. And, you know, I, I, again, that's uh, that people can use that to beat themselves up. The spiritual ego, which is the ego that learns spiritual language, right, can really use that to torture yourself. Well, what's the mirror of that? Where are you such an asshole? And it's not, that's, that's not the approach. Um, 
you are being urged to examine the traits you don't like in others and rather than merely judge them as bad or avoiding them, look at what they reflect within you. Particularly like I'm saying, if it's, yeah, no, I really judge that. I fucking hate when people do that, right? Uh, developing a compassionate attitude will help you realize that often the judgments we make about others are judgments we make about ourselves. But like I said, to do the look into it, E-S-S-E-N-E, -E, the Essene Mirrors. Uh, all relationships are a mixture of positive and negative. They help us broaden our understanding of life and love and help us see more of who we are. Now, there's an affirmation here, and we'll get to it in a second. But here's the thing. Of course, we are one. We are unity. Fifth dimensional unity, consciousness, of course, with, as without, so within, right? As above, so below. <laughs> Emerald tablets, Hermes, and all that jazz, right? Um, but that's why it's like to take it, it's too oversimplified. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like there's so much more depth there. Your affirmation. I love and accept myself as I am. Blessed be Louise Hay. I love and accept the world as it is. Yeah, say that a couple of times and then Matt con it. <laughs> Whatever arises, love that, right? Give that a voice, but don't let it burn down the house. Uh, I love and accept myself as I am. I love and accept the world as it is. Deep in my heart, I know that beyond my perception of good and bad, only love exists. That's worth it. This is now a soul contract read. It happens. <laughs> it happens. So, how wonderful. Thank you, Archangel Ariel, that we are shifting to our two tarot decks. Daughters of the Moon, what you need to be aware of inside of yourself. Heart, third, third eye crown, uh, chakra uh, landmarks, I guess, uh, correspondence. Uh, mythic tarot uh, for the outside world. Root, sacrum, solar plexus, how you navigate the physical world. Possibly how you appear from the outside looking in or some physical aspect of what we're looking at here. Please take a nice deep breath. Hmm, both feet on the floor for the Taurus. I felt that. Ooh, okay. My goddesses of Earth. And the sign of Taurus, and there are many of you. Please, one card in clarity for the Taurus Collective. Sun, moon, rising, Venus sign. Watching this video, receiving this reading. What do they need to be aware of inside of themselves? Heart, throat, third eye, and crown. Right? Their emotional power, their power of choice and decision, which is very highlighted here with that saboteur archetype with the angel of freedom. Right? Their mental power, their spiritual power with that uh, third eye and crown chakra. What do they need to be aware of considering their, they need to be aware of the saboteur archetype in themselves, someone else, the situation, all of that, some of that. And the healing angel of freedom extending a hand that they need to take and that rotocrosite energy that they need to work with, that there is compassion here, but there is projection. There are lessons being learned and love and relationships. So what do they need to be aware of inside of themselves that will help clarify this for them, this full moon in Libra, waning to new in Aries? Well, Six of Blades, which is a good card. It is a card of psychology, and it is very much, it, well, in this deck called manipulation, but this would be using the third eye to see things differently. Sixes are numbers of harmony and balance, in my experience, so this could be about counseling. This could be about... Uh, the right of confession, but in a sacred, confidential context, right? Or maybe just within yourself, having a conversation with uh, uh, your judgments, right? Your ego, inner child work, shadow work, right? That's waning tide here. So the thing with this card, the way that Fiona Morgan does this, the artist author does this, I don't know if she drew every single card, but she wrote the book, brilliant, uh, is that there's really no reversal to it, right? It's the double-headed axe. So you, you sort of have that spinning. It could go either way, which does say, uh, by the way, for what you need to be aware of inside of yourself, you have the ability as everybody does with the saboteur archetype within us, that soul power being developed, to um, face your fear of self-empowerment and the changes it would bring to your life, right? The choices and decisions, life-changing stuff going on here. It's just sometimes, like I said, a decision can be disguised as a simple choice, but it changes everything, and that's just how it's written. But be aware of that. You've got power here, but interesting element of air. What's going on on the outer? Breathe. My gods of earth and the sign of Taurus, please. One card in clarity for the Taurus Collective. Sun, moon, rising, Venus, sun, watching this video, receiving this reading. What do they need to be aware of in, uh, outside of themselves, right? The yang energy. Uh, root, sacrum, solar plexus energy defined. Some physical aspect of this 
or how they appear from the outside looking in. Sometimes that's holographic, it's both. Considering the saboteur archetype is in play here for them, somebody else, the situation, the healing angel of freedom they need to call to work with, rhodochrosite they need to work with, that compassion, right, and, and, and joy, but also understanding that there might be projection and judgment here at work in a relationship contract, a soul contract, with that six of blades kind of spinning the mind, seeing it differently, right, in the boat going from choppy water to smooth. What do they need to be aware of outside of themselves with this? What does this look like? Uh, this uh, full moon in Libra waning to new. In Aries, major arcana card, strength, courage, right? Emotional fortitude. Oh, real heart power here. Now look, of course, it's the Leo card, right? There may be a Leo involved uh, or not, but it means that you're going to have to really endure something here, right? That, And you are enduring something here, particularly if you are in a saboteurial situation that you have identified as saboteurial, someone sabotaging you, and I don't think you're off on that. I, I You know, this card is saying, it's like maybe you can see the shadow of the saboteur in them, because like I said, we all have that one. It's not like, I don't know, the engineer archetype. Not everybody has that. Everybody has the child, the victim, the saboteur, and the prostitute. And to compassionately understand and maybe see yourself, it's like, yeah, man, I remember. Not in that way, but I know that energy. I have done that, right? So then it harms you less. Do you see what I'm saying? That's how you wane the harm of someone else's intentions. Because, you know, Eckhart Tolle, it always comes back to me, he said, if someone is possessed by pain, right? Physical pain, emotional pain, mental pain, spiritual pain, unaware of takes them over and they kill somebody, did they really kill them? Most people say yes. Eckhart says no. I believe that's in The Power of Now. See The Power of Now or New Earth. I've read so much of his stuff, I can't remember anymore. And tons of YouTube stuff, he's so good. Um, uh, he said, no, they're possessed by the pain. They didn't really do it. Well, that's the shadow. But to take that even further, that the shadow can be loved and embraced and healed without it possessing you, taking you over. So there's explode or there's repress and eventually be possessed. But the middle road, if you want the, the third road, is to whatever arises, love that. And thank you, Matt Kahn, for that phrase it's very clear, right? It's just not easy. So whatever arises, love that. Yeah, four words. Yeah, it's, it's simple, not easy. Yeah, forgive everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're looking at a major arcana thing going on here for you. Major arcana is major. This is um, probably a great big, huge spiritual lesson about you finding your freedom and having the courage and the bravery to do it, to make a life-changing decision that other people may not like. Only I have to feel good about my choices. Thank you very much. It's a Matt Con mantra. Let's see, because that's the next deck. <laughs> if that comes up, you should all Venmo me. I don't care. Never. I'm having fun today. Please take a nice deep breath. <sighs> yeah, my Ascended Masters, please. My Ascended Masters are soul contracts, because whether this is Twin Flame or Soulmate... There's definitely something going on here with that rotocrosite. I get it. And the saboteur, because everybody's got that one. So this is survival level challenge lesson, whatever this is. So please, what is the perfect healing mantra? For the Taurus Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, I'm watching this video, receiving this reading with the saboteur archetype. Healing Angel of Freedom, Rhodochrosite, Manipulation Inner, but that feels really good. Heart Throat, Third Eye Crown. That's like doing chakra work, you know, whatever. Uh, with the Strength card, Heracles, and the Nemean Lion. Really having that courage, that emotional fortitude. Maybe not to rip somebody's head off. Maybe to contain, right? So what would be the perfect healing mantra they could do uh, with the Healing Angel of Freedom with maybe a piece of Rhodochrosite? This uh, full moon in Libra, waning to new in Aries, March, April, 2021. Soothing impatience. There's nothing to do but wait. <laughs> says, I, why, why did I not have to look at that one? Because I get this one fucking all the time. <laughs> There's nothing to do but wait. There's nothing to do but wait. Just what my grandma used to say to me. <laughs> Oh, okay. Soothing impatience. Now, that's not everybody's favorite mantra, but I will say it works if you work it, right? To, to integrate that with breath work, like on the inhale, there's nothing to do but wait. And then, 
just let it all go, right? Do that for 60 seconds and, and see what it does. I'm going to read from the bookie book um, because it's, it's really from the soul's perspective. These mantras are genius and they're simple and they're not in Sanskrit. I do prefer a Sanskrit mantra, uh, to be totally honest. It tricks the mind and the soul knows what you're what you're doing, uh, but in English, nonetheless, uh, there's nothing to do but wait. When impatience is soothed, in other words, you're not trying to stamp out impatience or repress it, like a big self-judgment, uh, being too impatient. To me, impatience has a lot to do with inner child and shadow work, because it's that child's like, when the fuck is it my turn, right? And therefore, to sabotage somebody who's getting it before you, or vice versa, right? Or maybe at the same time. Uh, when impatience is soothed, each perceivable barrier becomes an opportunity to be more aligned with your soul by slowing down. In the soothing of impatience, you no longer see moments of pause or delay as conspiring against you. Honey, I am a Virgo. I left my laptop visiting my family up in Saratoga. I was so angry at myself until I realized, yeah, and I drove uh, five hours, sat in traffic on Long Island Expressway, and I, it's okay, slow down. And that's exactly what I've been doing ever since, right? And I'm still being very productive. Um, instead, you realize that these moments, right, these, these delays uh, uh, are giving you time for inner reflection, where life's deepest meaning can be uncovered, even in the most ordinary of circumstances. In other words, it's not about what's going on out here right now so much that it is the universe, it's your soul kind of saying, all right, we're going to delay this, we're going to put that on pause, because remember, infinite variety of quantum timelines from stemming from every second, good God. Um, so, you know, they're like, okay, it's like a train track. They're like, okay, well, you're not ready for that, so let's do that. You really need a rest. And we're not in control of all of that. This mantra is ideal for becoming more grounded, really great, for a Taurus, uh, easing frustrations and releasing blame. Are you kidding me with this rhodochrosite card? Get a piece. Rhodochrosite is not that hard to find. You can find it in jewelry, but you can probably get it. It usually doesn't come tumbled, tumbled, but you can get like a, a chunk of it. Not horribly expensive. Soothing impatience. I get it. I get it. So look, the Six of Blades, I wouldn't, don't know if it's so much like meditation, but allowing that mental process to really like maybe go into prayer and say there's nothing to do but wait. We're just going to have to play this out because if you feel like a bull in a cage, right, in a China shop or cage, whatever, pick your, <laughs> pick your enclosure metaphor. Uh, uh, simile, because I said like. Uh, uh, then I get it. Then there's some waiting that has to be done here. There's nothing to do but wait. And particularly if you feel like your freedom is dependent upon what someone else is doing and they are being assholy rather than holy, uh, I get it. I get it. You'll get through this. You have the ability to get through this, but it's going to take it more being heart-centered than head-centered on this. Well, because your head might be like, Release the hounds. <laughs> Destroy them. <laughs> and and your heart knows better. But to bring that into balance, right now there's nothing to do. But, but wait, they just said, so it's not spit, it's not swallow, it's chew. <laughs> there's so much metaphor there. I'm not going to go for, don't go for that metaphor. I forgot what I meant for. Are you ready for the new deck? What is this thing called again? Right, it's so new. The magical spell cards. Ooh. Uh, uh, the Ancestors. Uh, this deck is uh, consecrated and now dedicated to the Ancestors of Magic, Miracles, and Mysticism. Three levels of power. Uh, it's a bunch of rhyming couplets. Some here that don't rhyme at all. Right? Some of them are just straight out prose. But I like the deck. I'm going to review it once I'm done with this series because I want to actually work with it and uh, not just give a first impression. I want to give a little bit more season. Please take a nice deep breath. And I do love reviewing shit as a Virgo. <clears throat> oh, great ancestors of magic, miracles, and mysticism for this Taurus collective sun, moon, rising, Venus, I'm watching this video, receiving this reading. What is the spell card, the inspiration, the little thing that might help them out, particularly so that they could really alchemize this saboteur archetype that everybody's dealing with? 
with the Healing Angel of Freedom, with that rotocrosite, with that interior manipulation, seeing things differently, and you're going to do that. With the Strength card on the outside, and I can feel that you know their strength, and you are backing them up on this, saying, you've got this, but take it slow and steady, soothing and patience, there's nothing to do but wait. So what is the piece of magic, miracles, or mysticism that you could trigger with one of these spell cards? This new uh, full moon in Libra waiting to new in Aries. My favorite flavors of Bartles and Jane's passion. <laughs> passion. Oh, what's this about? Rise, passion, rise up high, inflame my purpose, reach the sky. Not a bad rhyming couplet. There were not all winners in this deck, but the intention is good. I like that. Passion. Oh, look. I was just seeing if that was Eros and Psyche. I don't think it is. It's definitely a classic statue painting of something. I just don't know what it is off the top of my head. I am not art historian. I am witch. Uh, passion. Rise. Passion. Rise up high. Woof. Uh, inflame my purpose. <laughs> don't mind if I do. Uh, reach the sky. Now that does, yes, passion, sexual, romantic passion. If you want to go there, it's a general read. With soothing impatience, it does feel like this is a bull that wants to charge. And this could totally be about inflame my purpose, right? This could totally be about career. This could totally be about the things that you want to do, but there are things holding you back and you have to deal with the relationships, maybe not just with the people involved, but maybe, I don't know, with the current systems in place that are dissolving and being rebuilt, right? The death and rebirth of everything on planet Earth. Right? So there's nothing to do but wait. But what do you do with that passion? Well... That's the strength card. You don't have to kill the lion, nor do you have to let it rip you to pieces. You ride it. <laughs> you, walk, you walk beside it, right? You don't tame the lion. You, it's, it is that passion within you. Courage, right? Courage to follow the heart. Your heart's desires, your heart's passions here. You know, in that road across site, they're just reminding me that it's not all just about seeing the shadow in others. It's like if there is someone that you have like a, this passion for, then maybe step back and because you can't be together right now or whatever that is, right? The healing angel of freedom so that you can really empower yourself to say, yeah, what I love about them, I actually do. I've never seen that before, right? Instead of looking for like, what have I done wrong? What's wrong, right? Like, like, <laughs> what, what did the goddess Adina Monsoon say? <laughs> Tweezing your emotions out, right? Oh, that, actually, that was Sefi. Uh, 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 instead, really looking, at it, it's like, you know what? What I see in them is also in me, and there is great passion there. So embrace what's here to embrace. This is lovely. Last card down. I like this deck. I like it. So, I'm a bit of a stickler for rhyming couplets because I studied um, poetry structure in high school and I studied Shakespeare in high school and in college. So, you know, my mistress with the monster is not, not a couplet. It's an iambic pentameter, but whatever. Puck you. Breathe. <laughs> Near to her close and consecrated bower. Here we go. The Whispers of Love Oracle. The higher selves of all involved. Fifth dimension and above. Eighth chakra and above, please. Last card down. What is the Whisper of Love Oracle? The final message here. For this Taurus Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, I'm watching this video, receiving this reading, dealing with the saboteur archetype that needs to be dealt with over this waning moon period with the healing angel of freedom, rotocrosite, manipulation, which feels like working with the angel in the stone and the mantra is going to help if that's not all the way there. But that m mental power there, seeing this differently, seeing what the judgments are and doing the healing with great strength and courage that they need to do. It. It's not going to be easy, but a lot of it is going to be duration because soothing and patience, there's nothing to do for them to do but wait but there is great passion here rise passion rise up high and flame their purpose reach the sky so what do you say higher selves of all involved this full moon in libra <laughs> waiting to new in aries embrace your emotions embrace your emotions uh, don't push down your feelings or judge your emotions this is shadow work might as well say, embrace your shadow, right? Embrace, and let's just go back to the archetype, right? 
uh, induces self-destructive behavior or the desire to undermine others. And again, induces doesn't mean you act on it, right? But it induces that impulse, right? Uh, and the desire to undermine others. Well, let it speak within you, right? Or I don't know, turn off all your tech, right? Turn off all the lights, bolt the doors, and just let that child tirade without anybody knowing about it, right? To give it room to love what arises, hence the healing angel of freedom. This is going to free you. And sometimes it's not punishment that we can't move forward in our lives, and so we just have to wait. It's just like, do you want hot batter or cake? My guides have said that to me so many times, right? Because, you know, you mix it all up, put it in the oven, take it out 15 minutes too early. You got hot batter. That ain't cake, right? That's, that's something. But that, ugh, ugh, I put it like raw flour, ugh, right? No thanks. Hard pass, right? My family likes stuff burnt anyway. Oh, my God. Sesame cookies. My mom made me sesame. It's Sicilian sesame cookies. <laughs> Scratch so good. <laughs> but a little on the burnt it side, we like it, right? A little extra carbon in the diet, I guess. Um, but, but you know, go for it. Feel the feelings. But don't let the child sabotage you, right? Don't watch out for the self-destructive behavior because you might be dealing with somebody who's triggering this within yourself so that this work can be done. Holy crap. Let me put it together for you. In a prayer, in a blessing, because I have the grace of prayer. My book, Words of Grace... <laughs> I mean, just you can even just review the first bunch of pages on uh, on Amazon if you want. And I learned you do not need Kindle. You just need the Kindle app. I didn't know that. I guess that's new-ish, whatever. Anyway, uh, the, the prayer, I was born with uh, the grace of prayer. Prayer has always just flown out of me. So let me give you the best that I got. Please take a nice deep breath. My collective pantheons of the divine, please may the Taurus collective sun, moon, rising, Venus, I'm watching this video, receiving this reading, be blessed with all that they need, this full moon in Libra, waning to new in Aries, that they may embrace the strength that they need with the road across side to understand there is love, there is compassion, but there is also a bit of projection going on here in a soul contract, and there is nothing to do but wait there so that they may soothe the impatience that needs to be soothed while embracing their emotions, uh, not pushing down their feelings or judging their emotions, which is working with the healing angel of freedom that they need to call in to work with that, to alchemize this saboteur archetype into highlighting their fear of empowerment and the changes it would bring in their lives while they look at all of this differently with this six of blades, six of swords, mental journey within, seeing it differently, doing the mantra work, the prayer, the meditation, in order to really be in touch with this magical mystical, miraculous power of passion within them, uh, that their the rise passion, rise up high, inflame their purpose, reach the sky for their well-being, for the well-being of whoever is involved in this soul contract with them, and ultimately for the well-being of all. So mote it be. And so it is. Pretty good read. My bulls loving that big time. Well, I got a mantra, you got a spell, you got a crystal. It's pretty good for a free read. So if you liked it, liked it. You want more, subscribe. Feel like commenting, feel free. Uh, and hit that notification bell if you want to know when I'm posting. I'm busy, uh, but I'm glad to be busy. I'm doing what I love, working from home with my cats and an occasional stranger who can show me their recent medical records. You know what I'm talking about? Go read my book. It's good. At least go check it out, right? Go scan it, whatever it is. Links in the description box. And if you want to come party with me, uh, check out my uh, Facebook page. You want a reading, just find me on social media. We'll book it. It's, I do it every day. So uh, we're, we're good at it here at Drawing the Circle Productions. Otherwise, wishing you all the very best and the very, very blessed of this uh, full moon to new moon next March, April uh, 2021. My beloved bulls, hail. Farewell. And blessed, blessed be.